Okay, let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst to instruct the hearts of thy faithful, Grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. What day are we in today? Tuesday, right? <clears throat> Sorry, Wednesday. March 3rd. Right? March 3rd. We got to correct this. I said Tuesday here. I was doing it last night. Okay. Today, the gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. It's a long gospel, but we're uh, going to cut it in half and uh, we're going to comment, uh, read and comment only on the second half of this gospel today. Okay. The mother of the sons of Zebedee. Who are the sons of Zebedee? I remember. Remember? Who among the apostles? Jacob? James and, John. James and John. Okay, brothers. So the mother of James and John approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and one and the other one on your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you're asking. Can you drink of the chalice that I am going to drink? Then they said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice, you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right hand and my left, uh, to, sorry, to sit at my right and my left, that is not mine to give. But is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. But the great ones make their authority, and the great ones, sorry, make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So do you want to be great? Do you want to be doing big things? Do you want to ambition to be great men and women in the world? Well, the prescription that our Lord himself gives us is serve others and you will be great. Be of service to others and people will regard you to be great. Not because you're the smartest, not because you are the prettiest, the handsomest, not because you are the strongest, not because you are the tallest, not because you are the fastest in those kinds of things, but because you are the servant of all. You want to be great, serve. You want to be first, then be last. And people will make you go first. You hear this thing, this, this catchphrase nowadays very frequently. In fact, in mommy's company, they use it a lot. It's called servant leadership. Okay? That concept of servant leadership, being a leader, yes. Being the first of the pack, yes. But the servant of all. Okay? This has gained plenty of prominence nowadays in the corporate world where the mottos of leaders have, have become, you know, that they are servant leaders. 
their leaders, all right, but servants first. That's what marks and characterizes their leadership. Where did that come from? Right here from the Gospel of St. Matthew today, where Jesus, because he said, the Son of Man, okay, just so, meaning just like the Son of Man who came to earth not to be served, but to serve, okay, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So our Lord uses himself just like he does in many other things for everything actually that relates to our spiritual life and to even our human uh, endeavors, he is the model. And if he called himself the servant of all servants and he came to serve, not to be served, then we have to follow his lead. We have to follow his example, right? To be the servant of everybody else. That's why even the popes, since... Uh, Pope Gregory the Great, who coined the term servant of the servants of God, right? All the popes, the leaders of the ecclesial world, our church, have all called themselves the servant of the servants of God. All emulating the example of our Lord to be the servant of all. So you want to be a good professional, a great lawyer, a great accountant, a great doctor, a great scientist, a great policeman, a great uh, 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 um, blacksmith, a great truck driver, a great nurse, a great whatever it is you want ambition in the world to be. The best way to get there is to serve others, to serve others. Okay? To serve others and you will be great people will exalt you people will praise you for your service people will thank you for your service people will want you to serve more and put you in a position of leadership and authority so that you can serve more effectively that is why people who are in government who are in it for themselves and not for the service to the people they are not really being good leaders and that's why look at all the laws that they create <laughs> See, good leaders create good policies and good laws for the benefit of the people. But leaders, so-called political leaders especially, who are not leading in order to serve the purpose of the people but to serve themselves, they're called tyrants. Okay? They're not leaders. So leadership is always for service. Now, let me ask you this, though. What do you think is the greatest ambition you should ever have? Which is a common ambition that all of us ought to have. What do you think should we all ambition for? <laughs> Mia, what is that? Mia is going like this. <laughs> Mia, tell us, Mia. What is the biggest ambition which we all should be gunning for and aiming for even in this life? What is that, Mia? Louder, Mia. A saint. A saint. Very good. Very good. We should all be <laughs> ambitioning to become saints. Right? That is the biggest ambition of all. And in fact, that is what uh, uh, James and John we're ambitioning to be, you see, by asking our Lord that make us sit in your kingdom, one on the right, one on the left. They wanted to be the biggest saints, the greatest saints. Their biggest ambition was to become the saints who are closest to Jesus, right? But our Lord had to challenge them first and say, well, you know, can you drink of the chalice? That I am to drink, which is dying on the cross to save mankind, because that is his way of serving. serving. That's the way our Lord is serving the needs of the children of God. Okay, because he said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. 
So his ultimate service to humanity was to ransom us from sin, to ransom us from the devil, the clutches of the enemy, to redeem us from sin. That was the biggest service that he could have given mankind. And that was the mission he came to earth for. Okay, to open the gates of heaven so that you and I, all of us, can ambition to be with him in heaven. To be together with him in heaven. And the only way that can happen is if we are. <laughs> if we are saints. If we are saints. And you know what other people might say about wanting to become saints. They say, we might be crazy. <laughs> we might be crazy to want to become saints, right? We might be crazy just the same way that people might have thought James and John to be crazy, right? What are you asking for? You are a bunch of crazy people asking to be on the left and on the right, okay? So... Uh, no, it's not craziness. It's the biggest ambition that we should all have. Now, but, but, what does our Lord say? You want to ambition to become saints? You want to be on my left and on my right? Because those are the big greatest positions that you might be, be ambitioning for, right? To be very close to our Lord in His kingdom. Because you know what the position of the right and left mean in, 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 uh, the, in the court of the king? That means you are the closest to the king. You must be the, the king's uh, best friends, best advisors, and closest allies. You see? So nothing could be a bigger ambition for, for anybody who's in the court of the king than to be placed right beside the king himself. So <laughs> James and John had the loftiest of ambitions. They didn't only want to become saints. They wanted to be the greatest of all the saints. Right? So now, but what is the secret? What is the secret to become saints? Well, very good, Chevelle. Virtue. Yes. Virtue, which will be expressed in serving others. Right? Because when you live up to the expectations of virtue, that means you're going to serve others. Service is the outlet. Serving others is the outlet by which we exhibit the virtues that we are heroically trying to practice. See? So service is the outlet. So the secret again is service. We have to serve others if we want to be great saints. And that is what we need to ambition to be. Great saints. Okay? The question is, how do we do this? Do we also have to die on the cross like Jesus did? Do we have to give up our lives also the way Jesus did? Well, you know what? If, it, if that's what it takes, if that's what God is calling us to do, why not? See? The, 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 uh, the uh, life of the church has been nourished by the blood of the martyrs. The field, the fruitful field of the church and its harvest has been nourished by the, by the blood of the martyrs. But maybe not all of us are called to do that. And that's not ultimately necessary to be the greatest saint, right? Because the harder thing to do is to become a servant every day. To be of service to others every day of our lives okay every day and you know what you cannot be a martyr anyway you cannot be a martyr if you didn't have any practice of how to become a martyr every day <laughs> what is martyrdom all about martyrdom is giving up your life for a cause in this case for your faith that's what martyrdom is all about giving up well what is service Exactly the same thing. Service means giving up. Giving up what? Your own preferences. Your own likes. Your own comfort. 
your own whatever is your own okay and instead of instead of preferring your own you give it up so that you prioritize the needs of others that is what service is all about and so the martyrs they should have had some practice of giving up little things every day of their lives so that when the time comes that they're called to become martyrs well it's easier to give up your entire life because anyway that was your disposition all throughout your life already you've been giving up giving up giving up your preferences in order to serve the needs of others okay so let's think about that this time of lent what are the what are the things we can give up of ourselves so that we can serve the needs of the others what things are there you know what things are there little things little things they don't have to be big things okay when you see that your brother, your sister needs some vegetables, okay, are you going to wait until they ask, please pass the vegetables, please pass the salad? Well, if you're on the lookout, how can I serve my brothers, my sisters? Oh, oh, my little sister needs more cheese or wants bread. Okay, pass it on right away. Oh, my sister needs a, a, a glass of water. Go get it. My sister needs milk. Go get it. Don't wait until you're told, right? The phone rings. Who's the first one who gets up to answer it? Instead of being asked, hey, can you please get the door? Can you please get the phone? Can you please do this? Can... Be on the lookout. How can I serve? What can I give up in terms of my comfort to go and do for somebody else? A little service. The trash needs to be taken out in the bathroom. Are you thinking, oh, somebody else is in charge of that? <laughs> oh, uh, toys uh, need to be packed away. Oh, somebody else is in charge of that. We, we have chores at home. Somebody else is going to do that. Well, yeah, while that is true, how can you help that person who has that chore? How can you help that brother of yours, that sister of yours, whose assignment it is to pack away the toys or to throw the trash or to clean the counter top of the uh, of the kitchen or to clean the table or to sweep the floor or to take care of the dogs or to take care of the lawn i don't know there's so many things in one's life right that we can use to serve the others serve 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 you want to be great serve our life on earth is a life of service we cannot be selfish and thinking think only of i me myself and what i want what i like to do what what i prefer to do okay we will not be great that way and we will not be saints that way let us serve and we will be great not only on earth but in fact great in heaven for our lord where God the Father will decide what seat we take in heaven, whether it be the right or the left of Jesus. Doesn't matter. What matters is how we serve, how we serve others. And not so much just because we want to be great, right? That's already, uh, that's already a great ambition. But the greatest ambition that which really makes saints into saints is their love for God. Okay? That is really what makes great saints great saints. Their love for God. So when we serve others, we're not serving them just, in, just to serve our own ambition to be great. No. But it is rather we are serving them because of our love for God. Because in the others, in our brothers, in our neighbors, in our co-workers, in our uh, uh, circle of friends, we see Jesus Christ. We are serving Jesus Christ. Whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you did it for me.
See? So whatever we're doing to serve our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our co-workers, and our friends, we're doing it for love of God. That is the only motivation for service. Love for God. In fact, if there's no love of God in you, yeah, you will not care to serve the others. See? You will not care because you, you only love yourself for yourself. So you're not going to care to serve the others. So what will motivate you? To really be of service to others, it is love. Love for God. That is the biggest motivation for service. So learn to love God and you will serve because you will love his creatures. And you're going to see in his creatures, in your siblings, in your friends, in your co-workers, in your neighbors, another Christ. Are we done here, Eva? Okay. I'm sucking. <laughs> okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Okay, now we're like. <laughs>